As the crisis in Iraq deepens, so does international concern. We'll get to today's U.S. response in a moment, but first to this country, where for many authorities, the worries are rooted right here at home about radicalized Canadians now involved with militant groups overseas and about those who were but came back. According to this country's spy agency, 130 such Canadians have gone overseas. And CSIS believes 80 others were engaged but are now back. Then there's the man we profiled last night and the reaction that caused today. Senior correspondent Adrian Arsenault has the details. Among the ISIS fighters, the passport-burning, finger-wagging Canadian Farishir. This is a message to Canada and all the American Tawagheet. We are coming and we will destroy you. Digesting that threat is something happening in communities around the country and world today. The CBC's story on the front pages of online Somali newspapers, their comment pages filled with anger. It's every Somali Canadian's duty to protect Canada's interest, wrote one. He's crossed the line, burning the Canadian passport and threatening Canada. If only he knew how many kids out there would do anything for the opportunity, writes another, to have both a home and a good education. We are going for you, Barack Obama. There are urgent concerns now. Where is Sheridan? How real are his threats? And what about Canadians who've gone to fight with extremist groups and come home? Calgary was Sheridan's home, and this building in the city centre housed at least six men who went to fight with extremists, among them Damien Claremont, who died in Syria, and Salman Ashrafi, a suicide bomber in Iraq. They and Sheridan, among many, who've gone to fight from one particular cell. CBC's investigation puts the total number of jihadis from Calgary alone at between 20 and 30. Is that all? I've been in policing long enough to know that that number is probably at the small end of the continuum and it's probably larger than what you think. And the police chief added some jihadis have returned to Canada and Calgary. So why that city? Terrorism experts have a theory. There probably is uh, in the Calgary area, there is someone who's acting as an inspirational force, as a, in a sense a recruiter, not in the sense that they're affiliated with a group per se, but they're saying this is the right thing for you to do. Do not, insist the police chief, dismiss the worries about Canadian foreign fighters and the threat they pose. Al-Qaeda said years ago that Canada was in one of the top five countries that they were going to target. And if anybody thinks that it's not here in Canada, that the risk is not escalating in Canada. They're just clinging by their fingertips to the idea that somehow Canada is special and unique and doesn't face these risks like the entire rest of the world. And I'm here to tell you, we're not that special. So Adrian, very strong words from him. What, what is Calgary doing about it? Well, the police chief said that with the help of local imams, there are outreach programs, but they know they need a lot more than that. And today, the, the chief and the police force met with an ambassador to ask advice about, you know, what are the best practices around the world to deal with radicalization? You know, Calgary is very aware that it has a problem, and its police force at least seems to want to take the lead on finding the solution. Great work. Thanks, Adrian. Adrian Arsenault.